Here's the shaker that I'm going to be using to try to extract the gold from Jason's ore. It's a bump shaker. The motion of the table is in the direction of the grooves, like that. And uh, the water bar is here. It has a uh, hole spaced one inch apart. Tailings tray is here, and the cons tray is there. Here's the water system pump. Just a bilge pump comes up to the water bar. This is the cons port coming out of here and down into that bucket. And the tailings go into a three and a half gallon bucket. And here's the power supply. This is 300 watt hour, 12 volt. The control box, pump, auxiliary PWM, and this is the controller for the table. This produces a frequency and an amplitude, which are adjustable. All right, so let's turn on the water supply. I run this at about seven and a half volts. I don't know what the recovery rate is going to be on Jason's gold. It mills very, very fine. So uh, we're going to see. So I've been dialing in the table. I now have a one degree slope that way and a three and a half degree slope this way. And I'm getting exactly the behavior that I want from the material coming out of the end of the grooves. The bump action forces the heaviest or highest density material, which would be gold in this case, to go that way. And it comes out of the end. Some of the gold travels like that, but a lot of it comes down. It gets caught in this groove and it goes out and comes down, and etc. All right, so here's Jason's ore, ground to 60 mesh or finer. And I've got uh, 2.9 kilograms of dry ore, and I got it wet, and I got uh, dish soap in there, so the small stuff doesn't uh, float away. And we're ready to run it on the shaker table. All right, well, that's all of the material. I'll just let the table clear, brush it down, and uh, we'll pull it out, see what we got. There's the cons. And I intentionally set up the table to capture pretty much all of the heavy stuff that I could. And that's what's in the tailings bucket. Okay, here's the cons from the shaker table run. Just going to remove the magnetic material. I don't generally find really any gold in this, but I always wonder about it. I've checked it a few times by doing an assay, and I don't ever get anything, but I always worry about it a little bit. Anyway. It is what it is. The 100 micron gold particle only falls at a rate of a centimeter per second. So if you've got two centimeters of water, you've got to give it just a second or two to let it settle.
so there's the gold that I extracted on the shaker table from 2.9 kilograms of Jason's new gold mine. All right, so here is all of the gold I collected from the shaker table. I'll collect it up into a little beaker, and you're looking through the bottom of the beaker. Okay, there it is in the pan, dried up. There's my hand, eight inches. So take your guess at what we've got, and I'll weigh it up. And there's all the fine gold underneath. It's very beautiful. Kind of unique looking to me. Point one oh three. And I don't know what to maybe subtract 10% from that. You know, maybe 90, I say 95 milligrams. The sample size I used in um, this run today was 2.9 kilograms, and I ground it to 60 minus mesh. The shaker table concentrated that down to 36 grams, which is a concentration ratio of 80 to 1. And then from the cons, I extracted 95 milligrams estimate of gold plus silver. So I get an ore value of 32 grams per metric ton of precious metals. And from the previous video, from the fire assay, I got uh, a range of 25 to 30 grams per metric ton, which I consider quite similar results. So this ore is running, I would say, around an ounce a metric ton.